cool hey guys um so today um i'm just going to be doing my thalamus tutorial basically um so most of the information is from crossman's and then i also integrated um the lecture that dr abiola did as well i just um mainly condensed it as well uh that lecture is pretty pretty good it's just a lot of slides and um so it's more condensed here you might find that better i don't know i, I found his lecture better than what i did but um i still enjoyed making this and i think it's uh it's a pretty good summary um okay now to begin with the thalamus uh we will get to where it's found but let's just state some facts okay so it's two symmetrical structures it is from the diencephalon and it's an ovoid shape but let's just zone in on the diencephalon um firstly we know that the diencephalon came from the wow okay the diencephalon came from the prosencephalon um which gave us the telin am i saying the right things i think telencephalon and diencephalon okay and then the diencephalon consists of um the thalamus which is what we're doing today but also things related to the thalamus like the hypothalamus which is below and the sub thalamus which is also below but um more posterior and more lateral uh when compared to the hypothalamus so the yeah, the subthalamus we know that's involved with the basal ganglia and then we also have the epithalamus which includes epithalamus, which includes the um, stria medullaris, the habenula commissia, the habenula, and the pineal gland. I just thought it included the pineal gland only, but then when I uh, when I googled it, epithalamus includes all of those things, all of the components um, that connect to the pineal gland as well. So epithalamus is that, and we also have a metathalamus. Apparently, this is an old word and it's not really used anymore because we know these as the medial and lateral geniculate bodies, okay? So, that is the diencephalon right there. Wow, I chose a purple highlighter and a purple background, so that's that. Okay, that's the diencephalon. Um, okay, we said it's an ovoid shape. It is gray matter, but um, it's easily named now because we have white matter between it. It's the Y-shaped white matter known as the internal medullary lamina. There is an internal medullary lamina somewhere else, um, which is related to the basal ganglia, but I'm not sure that that's important. Um, they never emphasized it. So what we do know is that there's an internal medullary, medullary lamina which uh, separates the thalamus into different parts. Okay, uh, the three main parts is obviously anterior, lateral, and medial. Uh, we don't subdivide anterior, even though it can be, but we don't. <laughs> lateral is subdivided, um, and then medial. I didn't like the way he subdivided the lateral in the lecture because he said things, but then he didn't like relate what he was saying. So I'm just going to say that it's easier to learn the actual nuclei rather than subdivide it and then figure out which one's which. But we'll get to each nuclei, uh, nucleus. We'll get to each nucleus. Um, and uh, the anterior part will lie between the limbs of the Y shape. So uh, I'm just going to draw a Y shape here and the anterior one would lie here. And then on either side of the stem, we'd have the medial part and the lateral part. Okay, if that makes any sense. Um, and then we know that um, interthalamic adhesion can connect the left and right thalamus. But um, that's in most people. So for some people, that that doesn't exist. Okay. Uh, for relations, anteriorly, the anterior pole is forming the posterior wall of the interventricular. For Raman, Hoffman, Okay. Um, and then for the medial wall, it is the third ventricle. It's um, forming, it's like the third ventricle and it's between the two thalami. Um, I didn't include superiorly, but we know that it will form the floor of the body of the lateral 
bench goals, okay? And then um, posteriorly, we have the body of the fornix, the caudate nucleus, which is curving around it like a C-shape. You can see it in, um, in the diagram over here. And then splenium of corpus callosum, also curving, it ar curving around like, um, like a C-shape. And um, the internal capsules posteriorum separates it from, um, from the basal ganglia. Um, from the, what is it called? The, um, the lentiform nucleus. Sorry about that. Okay, and then inferiorly is obviously the hypothalamus as well as the subthalamus. So maybe I'll just include that there for just completeness. The subthalamus is also below it, but just more lateral actually. And then we have the cerebral aqueduct inferiorly that's forming after the, obviously it's forming after the third ventricle. Um, and then tegmentum, okay? That's, um, that's its relations. Okay, now for its blood supply. The posterior cerebral artery is, I think, as detailed as we need to know. So um, here is the specific branches of the posterior um, cerebral. Um, and they've never mentioned it, and it's not like in our DH sheets or whatever. It's here, but I think what we do need to know is that posterior cerebral artery supplies the thalamus. And we can just see all these branches leading to the different parts of the thalamus. Here's the anterior, medial, and lateral. Okay? And um, in Dr. Abiola's lecture, he did mention how lateral is subdivided. And it makes sense because you can see how big the lateral segment is. It definitely needs to be subdivided because um, it's just too large. Um, and then uh, we do know, our, obviously, that the posterior cerebral artery is a uh, terminal branch of the basilar artery, which was formed by the vertebral artery. Okay, and then I just have a reminder here of the circle of Willis and how we got to um, this, okay? And now we're gonna move on to the functions. Okay, this is kind of intense. Okay, so the functions are split um, into uh, firstly, non-specific and specific functions. Um, the actual names of those functions are f is found in, in Dr. Abiola's lecture. Um, so I didn't, wait, did I copy paste it? No, okay, I didn't just want to copy paste it, but it's better to know these nuclei and where they're going to and where they're coming from. And from there, you can make sense of the functions. You don't have to just rote learn functions. You can figure out based on where it's coming from and where it's going to, because the thalamus is, um, is, is a, re a relay system. The, the thalamus is a relay system, okay? So its non-specific function would be um, with this involved with the reticular activating system. And we know they keep on emphasizing something about arousal and, you know, like waking up. So the reticular activating system uses the central median and the midline nuclei to get to the neocortex. A bit about um, the central median one it's that this one is actually um it's inside the internal medullary lamina and then the the, the midline nuclei is the median one i think they're mentioning this one here that's the one they're referring to when they say midline nuclei so those ones will go to the neo cortex it's not um not saying specifically where in the cortex that's why it's non-specific but for the for the rest of the nuclei there's specific locations in the cortex that it will reach so um it's the relay station okay for everything except smell every single sense except smell but that's just um it's already a subdivision. Um, what I what I need to mention is, um, okay. So there's four there's four functions, in terms of what it relays, in terms of the types of things that it relays specifically. Um, there is this group here, which is going to be the sensory group. Sensory information is going to be relayed. Then there's this group here, the motor group, motor information relayed. And then this group is the visceral 
group like visceral information is going to be relayed and then this group is the integrative function and um, uh, the, the way this table works is you can see that okay their regions are from these places these are the nuclei that they are relayed through the thalamus and then this is their destination in the cortex you can just see all of these is places in the cortical regions of the brain for the integrative it's um, a bit tricky to find the origin because actually sometimes i think they relay back and forth to each other so the origin could be these areas and then it just goes back to it as a destination um so uh yeah so for integrative it's just a bit more tricky but uh not impossible okay um we will begin with sensory so to start off we have spinothalamic and we know that spinothalamic is pain and temperature wow look at that handwriting wow and then the medial lemniscus is just for like touch and like pressure sense uh, but then this is all from the body right everything except the face it's going to go through the ventral posterior posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus right here and then hit the somatosensory cortex doesn't that make sense because it, it it's a sensation okay so it needs to go to this part of the brain and um, the same needs to happen with whatever the trigeminal nerve is doing. So this is the track that the trigeminal nerve uses. And it will send information to the ventral posterior medial nucleus of the thalamus. Also to the somatosensory cortex. But obviously now we're still missing out a lot of other sensations. We're going to go on to auditory just now. We're going to do visual as well. Um, and we know that smell is exempt. It doesn't use the thalamus. But we did miss out taste and, um, well, balance as well. Um, so the nucleus of tractus solitarius, as well as the vestibular nucleus, project also to the ventral, posterior, medial nucleus. So now we've covered every single sensation. Uh, I'm just going to mention that this is taste, this is face, and this is balance. So every single sensation except smell is officially going through the thalamus with this group here using the ventral posterior medial nucleus getting to that somatosensory cortex. The fact that um, the auditory and visual um, um, pathway is separate, it's just because they have their own cortex. They don't have to go to this, okay? Um, if you look at the inferior colliculus as the point of origin for the auditory cortex um, from that... Uh, from the ear lecture, he mentioned, you know, that like mnemonic sees them uh, with I being the inferior colliculus and M being the medial geniculate body. Sorry. Uh, so from the inferior colliculus, we go to the medial geniculate body and from there, auditory radiations. So these are, you know, these are just little auditory radiations to so the auditory cortex. I included the problems numbers as well. Um, and then for the superior colliculus, it's already, uh, we know that that's the visual cortex before the superior colliculus. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, because um, I'm just doing this first time. I did not rehearse this. Optic tracts. Okay. And then superior colliculus. Um, and that's going to be... Uh, what's it called, like superior brachium or the brachium of the superior colliculus and then it goes to the lateral geniculate and then from lateral geniculate it's going to use visual or it's optic, actually optic radiations whoops, that is a huge eraser optic radiations to the visual cortex and we know the visual cortex is number 17 so that is the entire sensory um, function or sensory relay of the thalamus done. Now we're going to go on to motor. There's only two. Um, if you remember back to what the basal ganglia uh, and cerebellum do, um, it would make sense uh, to why they're involved here. So the origin is the basal ganglia. They project to the ventral anterior 
nucleus of the thalamus, and that projects to the premotor cortex, number six, okay? And then they're also involved in this other one here with the cerebellum, to so the ventral lateral, which goes to the primary motor. Um, and I'm just going to pause right there, okay? So, yeah, these names, these names are, it's a lot, it's a lot of information, but if you can visualize where it is, it's um, a whole lot easier. The basal ganglia is going to go to the ventral anterior nucleus of the thalamus, okay? Um, this one. So, we're saying the basal ganglia is coming in here. Whoa, okay? Basal ganglia, right? Um, and then we know that, well, let's get, oh man, forgive my bad writing. Basal ganglia and cerebellum is going to use a ventral lateral. And if you look at the position of the thalamus in the brain, if it's a ventral anterior, it's obviously more anterior. It's like more forward than, um, than this one, okay? So the ventral anterior projects to the pre, the premotor cortex. But then the ventral lateral slightly like further back. You can actually see that it's obviously behind. It's like behind the ventral anterior. So the ventral lateral projects to the primary, primary motor cortex, which is slightly behind the premotor cortex. You know, if you look at the brain on the superior lateral surface. So that makes sense in terms of the fact that the ventral anterior projects to the premotor area while the ventral lateral projects to the primary motor area and um if i just uh go recap on the, the nuclei that we've already covered as well um the spinothalamic medial lemniscus pathway use ventral posterior lateral and then all of these sensations the face taste and balance use ventral posterior medial so this is the ventral posterior group Behind the group that we just um, have covered, ventral posterior, this group here. Um, and I'm not sure about ventral um, intermediate because um, I haven't seen anything, like the textbook didn't say like what its function is. So even when I draw out the thalamus, I don't really include that, but whatever. So this is the ventral posterior nucleus. It's divided into lateral, which you see on this part, and then also the, the medial part, which is actually like medial and underneath so you can't actually um, see it on this view but yeah that's where all every like single sense except auditory and visual every single sensation is going through this part the ventral posterior nucleus divided into lateral and medial parts okay and uh, yeah and the medial and lateral geniculate shouldn't be tricky i mean it's like these two extra parts attached to the thalamus at the back Okay, and we move on to the visceral functions. <sighs> Starting with um, the anterior nucleus and the dorsomedial nucleus. If you look at the limbic system lecture, a lot of emphasis is placed on this nucleus. It's hard to forget, like once you go through that lecture, it's really hard to forget that the anterior nucleus of the thalamus is where the hippocampus projects to. And then from, okay, and it's easy to remember if you think about the pathway. So the hippocampus um, it's, it's connected, um, it, it forms like the fornix, okay? It's fimbria form like the whole pathway of the fornix and the fornix curves around, forms that C shape. The fornix projects to, um, those, uh, mammillary bodies, I think it is, yeah? And then mammillothalamic tracts get you all the way up to the anterior nucleus of the thalamus and then the anterior nucleus of the thalamus takes you to the cingulate gyrus. And then the cingulate gyrus it's curving around like a C-shape, going around to the, the parahippocampal gyrus. And uh, eventually it forms that loop. You know, it's forming a, a limbic loop. I think that's, um, yeah, that's, that's in the limbic system lecture. So this is, uh, this is a loop. I'm just going to write the word loop here so we can know that that's a loop. And that's a visceral function of the thalamus, okay? That would make uh, sense if it's uh, limbic. It's just going to be uh, involved with emotions. I think that's a circuit of Pepe. I'm not sure if that's memory or emotion. So just uh, just double check that. And then for dorsal medial uh, nucleus, it's also involved in this visceral system. But this one projects to the prefrontal cortex. So it's taking information from your emotions. 
uh, this is hypothalamus, by the way. We know the hypothalamus was involved previously with its mammillary bodies. Remember, I mentioned that loop. But yeah, so we're involving the hypothalamus, the amygdala, which is involved with our emotions. And we're sending it to the dorsal medial nucleus. Wait, let me just visualize that. The dorsal medial nucleus is in this region here. Uh, look at it in cross section. Here it is, the same one, dorsal medial. That's projecting the prefrontal cortex. And we know that the prefrontal cortex is all about judgment and thinking. And um, I remember the guy in the video at the DH of the prefrontal cortex is like where you, um, what, like where you have to protect from Satan or something. I don't know. But yeah, prefrontal cortex. Um, I should have included the Brodman's numbers. I think it's, um, well, I think it's. 9, 10, 11, 12. But yeah, so prefrontal cortex. So we're taking these emotions and we are processing them. Uh, we're taking these emotions and we're processing them and thinking about it, okay? And this is uh, a different loop, okay? It's different from this one, which is going from the hippocampus and it's trying to memorize things, you know? This is like trying to build a memory. This is trying to process an emotional event and think about it and act properly accordingly and not act rash rashly is that a word rash okay i don't know but yeah if you can understand functions like that and if you can understand where it's projecting from and where it's going to learning names of nuclei is not even a problem it's not even it's not even the big a big deal so yeah just a reminder there's the dorsal medial nucleus right here and there okay and moving on Finally, to the integrative function, this is kind of easy in terms of seeing where it is. Okay, so here's the palfina, here's the lateral posterior, and here's the lateral. Okay, and then the the lateral dorsal. Okay, lateral dorsal. Okay, so as you can see, it's kind of like between everything almost. Can you see how it's? We have all of these, right? We said this was motor, this was sensory, this was also sensory. This was like, um, this was involved with the limbic system. This was also involved um, with the limbic system. This one was, uh, if you think way back, this one was non-specific. It was the, the arousal kind of system. And this whole strip, which we're saying is involved in the integrative function, that entire strip is in the middle of all of that. So it makes sense that that serves the, um, the integrative function because that's what integration is, you know? It um, takes all bits of information and it's, and it's like putting them together and piecing all of that information together. So from pulvina, lateral posterior, and lateral dorsal, all along that line serves an integrative function. Okay, um, the pulvina, just um, a, a lot of theory. So it projects to parietal, temporal, and occipital association areas. What is a parietal association area? That's obviously your, it's your sensory, it's your sensory association area. The parietal association area is sensory. It's number five and seven, Brodmann's numbers. It interprets sensory information. Temporal association areas. I did not memorize these numbers, so I wrote it down beforehand, but yeah, temporal association area is for auditory, like, you, that's, um, that's auditory. Um, parietal is like those somatosensory type things, somatosensory association. Occipital association areas, um, which is number 18 and 19, is, um, visual. We know that that's visual. Um, so... That's quite um, a lot that the pulvinar nucleus is projecting to. And it makes sense. It's quite big. Looks big. Yeah. Okay. And then the lateral dorsal and the lateral posterior, which is also along that line, also have integrative functions. The lateral dorsal is projecting to the cingulate gyrus and the lateral posterior to the sensory association area. Sensory association area we know is um, behind um, the post central gyrus and it's Sparkman's number five and seven. Okay. Um, 
let's just visualize that again. So we said here is lateral posterior and here is lateral dorsal. And the lateral posterior is going to project to the sensory association area and the lateral dorsal to the cingulate gyrus, okay? And uh, yeah, so those are what each nuclei projects to and that's what it looks like on the actual thalamus. Um, those functions, I think it was like scale uh, three or something uh, that Dr. Abiola did. You can check it out in his lecture. Um, this is just a, a summary and kind of um, a tutorial type thing. And I hope it is helpful. Thank you very much. Good night.